confession and mm-hmm. reconciliation, I believe is the language you use there. What happens in confession in relation to salvation? So basically, um, the sacrament of confession is, uh, I assume you're not, I mean, if you are, let me know, because I can tell you what happens in, in a confessional. But in terms of in terms of what happens in relation to salvation, um, I guess maybe taking a biblical approach would, would help make this clear. So if you look in the Gospels, especially in the Synoptic Gospels, you have uh, Jesus forgiving people's sins. And in a, a famous example is when they bring him the paralytic, and he sees that they have faith, and he tells the paralytic, take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. And he's even criticized in a way, although it's internally in the hearts of his critics, they're thinking, you know, who is this man to forgive sins? He's blaspheming. And in Matthew's account of this, Matthew uh, points out that Jesus then does this miracle to show he has this authority from God. And Matthew notes that the people who saw the miracle then glorified God who had given such authority to men. So there's a recognition that God has given the authority to forgive sins to men. Now that could just mean Jesus, you know, the man Jesus Christ, or it could be broader than that from Matthew's perspective. Well, fortunately, we have the Gospel of St. John, where uh, a on the day after of the resurrection, um, he appears to the disciples, and he he says, "As my Father sent me, so I send you." And he then breathes on them and says, "Receive the Holy Spirit." And then he says, and now he clarifies the sense in which all this is happening. You know, he's been sent by the Father in some way. He's going to empower them by the Holy Spirit to send them in the same way. So what's the way? He says, whosoever sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. So just like he has been given the authority to forgive or retain sins by his Father, now he's giving that to his ministers so they can go out and and do it with the broader community. But in order to know whether a sin should be forgiven or retained, his ministers are going to need to know about the sin and whether you're repentant of it. You know, are you sorry that you did that? Do you plan on doing that every day from now on, or are you going to rely on God's grace to try to not do it? Um, Those are the kind of things they need to know. And since most priests are not highly telepathic, if they're going to know those things, you got to tell it to them, and hence the sacrament of confession. So basically just like at the beginning of the Christian life, and we didn't talk about this too much. Um, I mean, I didn't go into the biblical basis for it, but just like at the beginning of the Christian life, God uses the sacrament of baptism to give you his grace. If you then fall away from his grace, and St. Paul is real clear with some people, he says, you've fallen away from grace. You can come back to him, and God has ordained this additional sacrament, which the church fathers, and I will send you the link, Um, or send you the quote, uh, speak of as the second plank after the shipwreck. Um, And so that's one way of articulating it, but does that get to what you were asking, or is there something more I can fill in? No, that does. Thank you for that. And thank you for all of this today. The clarity and depth of your answers has been incredibly helpful to me, and I hope it will be to others as well. I'm so grateful for your time, and I've really enjoyed this conversation. As we 